Chapter 2, Leveling Off, Gender and Sexuality. Learning Outcomes. At the end of this chapter, the students should be able to differentiate gender from sexuality, explain gender socialization, identify gender stereotypes and the problem stereotyping brings, discuss sexual orientation and gender identity and expression or SOGI. Gender and Sexuality To prepare for this journey into gender studies, reflect on your own experience of gender differentiation. A sample realization is the Eureka moments of one of the authors. When did you first realize that you were a girl or a boy? I can exactly say I had one defining Eureka moment. Reflecting on my past, I can name three distinct memories that involved my gender. My first Eureka moment I had involved my being teased about having a best friend of the opposite gender. My mother's friends would tell me that my best friend was my sweetheart, implying that we would one day be married. He was a boy, I was a girl. We were both three years old, and I realized we were different. The next Eureka moment had to do with my taking the lead in a school play. I was meant to be a mother. Specifically, I was made to be the mother in the children's book. Are You My Mother? by P. D. Eastman. I refused. Because as a child, I felt awkward being place in mother, in mother roles as though I knew that being a child mother was bad, even if it was just a, for a play. Lastly, I was made an extra in a movie that my mother was dramaturg for. It was a historical documentary slash movie about the life of Rizal, the Philippines' national hero. They needed someone to play the hero's nephew. I was chosen because I was young and androgynous, enough to be seen as a little boy. I distinctly remember refusing because I did, I did not want to cut my hair. I don't want to be a boy, I said. The gay hairdresser, upon overhearing my refusal, responded with a me too. I then accepted my fate. I realized that my hair would grow back and I could be a girl again. My hairdresser had no option and would be stuck as a woman trapped in a man's body. There are three similarities with the anecdotes I shared. First, all involved my mother or being a mother. Even at a young age, I had associated being a woman with motherhood because I was an only child and had no other female role models aside from my mother, aunts, and grandmothers all of whom had offspring. Another theme has to do with my relationships. I was sexualized as a young child. As the people around me automatically declared my relationship as romantic because it involved someone of the opposite sex. And while these do not seem like important moments, they are moments that I am sure many, many can relate to especially in the Philippine culture. From a young age, children are teased for who they are friends with. If they are, if they are girls, they are told not to have too many boyfriends or to not act like their boyfriends. If they are boys, perhaps some older relatives would tell them not to be close or act too much like their sisters or mothers because these moments concern boyhood girlhood, and the differences between the sexes. One can say these moments involve sex and gender. Sex and gender are two very essential yet underrated parts of human life. They affect all aspects of our lives, from how we look, from how we look at and act in the jobs we take to how we are regard the laws and values of our society.
this chapter will establish the differences between the difference between sex and gender. Define gender roles and relationships according to the United Nations and other relevant national bodies. And determine how gendered interactions affect one's everyday lives. It will examine gendered interactions at various levels within the family, workplace, community, and larger society. What is sex? Let's talk about sex. The good, the bad, and the complicated. While sex is often referred to as the act of reproduction, scientifically, copulation, it is nonetheless an important notion of how population or pop culture sees sex. According to popular culture, sex is something done for pleasure and perhaps in a more Freudian, Freudian or Freudian sense. It is what drives people to do certain things. The association of sex with pleasure and vice versa may make people dismiss it as a serious topic for study. Meanwhile, because sex is so often equated with and related to gender, gender as a topic for discussion is likewise disregarded, yet by showing the difference between sex and gender and laying the groundwork for this difference, perhaps you as the reader may start questioning discriminatory practices in society that relate to sex and gender. This book defines sex through its biological and not cultural definition. Sex in the biological sense is a category for living beings specifically related to their reproductive function. For most living creatures, there are two sexes, the male and the female. The female sex is determined by the following characteristics produces egg cells which are fertilized by another sex and bears the offspring. The male sex, on the other hand, produces sperm cells to fertilize the egg cells. Chromosomes determine one's sex. Chromosome XX equates to female and XY equates to male. These pairs of chromosomes are distinct because the differences in their characteristics are necessary for reproduction. Copula copulation on the, or the union of the sexes XX and XY, or male and female, produces offspring. Genitalia, or the organs used for reproduction, and the secondary sex characteristics are largely influenced by one's X and Y chromosomes. These chromosomes determine whether someone's body will express itself as a female or a male. Hormones also play a large part in the definition of one's sex. The exposure to hormones in the womb affect how the organism develops as a male or a female. Physical features related to secondary sex characteristics are also influenced by hormones. Both males and females have estrogen, testosterone, and progesterone, but in varying amounts. Usually males have more amounts of testosterone and females have more amounts of estrogen. Hormonal imbalances, both natural and induced, can result in some born as a female to have more testosterone than her male counterpart. Biology is learned in school, but the enactment of one's sex is experienced differently in one's culture. When one sees a person or she does not see as an XX or an XY, but a male or a female, perhaps in more accepting societies, one sees a male, a female, or an LGBT because of one's perception of maleness and femaleness it his or her view of another is prone to change. Take for example, the case of commercial model displayed in advertisements along ENSA. These models are perceived to conform to society's definition of what is conventionally attractive, enough that they become the face of certain products or brands. 
Because a model on a billboard is two-dimensional, his or her looks allow people to assume anything about him or her. If that person is a male striking what seems to be a powerful pose, it could be assumed that the man is a powerful person. If all the males presented in advertisements are in powerful and dominant possess poses, one can presume that power and dominance are, so are associated with maleness or masculinity. Similarly, if all females, if all females in the advertisements are, are seen to take care of people, their spouses, children, or parents, one associates females with caring roles. Thus, to be female is to care. These roles, which do not necessarily have anything to do with the reproduction, become tied to one's sex. This is where gender comes in. What is gender? Gender is a socially learned behavior, usually associated with one's sex. It is a short for gender relations between the sexes or how the male and female relate to one another. Gender is also based on how people see themselves and on their tendency to act along either the masculine or the feminine line. Gender is a social construct that determines one's roles, expected values, behavior, and interaction in relationships involving men and women. It affects what access it affects what access is available to men and women to decision making, knowledge and resources. Sex and gender are two different things, but one's gender is usually associated with one's sex. Note the difference between sex and gender in the following table. Sex, physiological, related to reproduction, congenital, unchanging. Un congenital and unchanging due to advances in science and other societal trends, one can now legally and physically change his or her gender. Gender, social, cultural, learned behavior, changes over time, varies within a culture among cultures. Does sex correspond to gender? Many scientists, psychologists, and sociologists believe that sex does not determine one's gender. Femininity, or the behavior that one associates with females, may not actually be tied to a woman's sex. Similarly, masculinity is not tied with one's gonads. The whole idea of being a woman, therefore, is based on gender and society's belief in how a woman should act. Instead of a biological functions that are inescapable. The notion that one's biology predetermines roles one must have in life should not be in the case at all. Doing household chores is said to be a woman's job, yet there are some men who do the cooking and the cleaning at home. Aggressive sports are said to be more for men, but for every men's sports team, there is a counterpart for women. In these types of scenario, gender role socialization comes in. Gender role socialization is defined as the process of learning and internalizing culturally approved ways of thinking, feeling, and behaving. It starts as soon as one is born and manifests from the color associated with one's gender to the roles one sees his or her gender performs the most. Socialization affects all parts of one's identity by dictating what is acceptable to do because of one's educational background, class, religion, and gender. Thus, female and male gender roles develop. One's socialization regulates his or her perceptions of genders in two ways. 
external regulations, and internalized self-control. Each society has social norms that have been developed over time due to the values and beliefs that it holds. External regulation involves various institutions dictating what is proper and normal based on one's identity. It affects how one sees his or her gender and that gender in relation to other genders. External reg regulation can happen through censorship of some forms of sexuality. Homosexuality is bad or subtle form of control such as microaggression, subtle messages with sexist assumptions behind them. Only girl boys do housework. Because of these external regulations enforced by society, notions on gender are absorbed and internalized social control is formed. Internalized social control because of a person, sorry, Internalized social control causes a person to police himself or herself according to society's standard, standards and norms. A consistent practice will eventually affect all aspects of his or her personality, in turn resulting in the policing of others, expanding and perpetuating this regulation. Similarly, if someone finds himself or herself deviating, from that, from what society finds normal, he or she may become deviant and excluded from society. Gender stereotypes. Gender stereotypes develop when different institutions reinforce a biased perception of a certain gender's role. Gender's role. These institutions include the family, the church, the school, the state, and the media. These beliefs can be limiting if seen as prescriptive of a gender's role rather than descriptive of many possible roles one can have. Gender stereotypes are of four types. Number one. Sex stereotypes are a generalized view of traits that should be possessed by men and women, specifically physical and emotional roles. These stereotypes are unrelated to the roles women and men actually perform. Number two, sexual stereotypes involves assumptions regarding a person's sexuality that reinforce dominant views. For example, a prevalent view is that all men are sexually dominant. Another notion is heteronormativity, or the assumption that all persons are only attracted to the sex opposite theirs. Number three, sex role stereotypes encompass the roles that men and women are assigned to based on their sex and what behaviors they must possess to fulfill these roles. Number four, compounded stereotypes are assumptions about a specific group belonging to a gender. Examples of groups subject to compounded stereotypes are young women, old men, single men or women, women, factory workers, and the like. SOGI. The abbreviation SOGI stands for Sexual Orientation and Gender Identity and Expression. Sexuality is different from sex. As the, form, as the former is the expression of a person's thought, feelings, sexual orientation, and relationships, as well as the biology of the sexual response system of that person. The different terms standing for SOGI are further defined below. Number one, sexual orientation covers the three dimensions of sexuality, namely sexual attraction, sexual behavior, Sexual fantasies, B. Emotional prefer preference, 
social preference, self-identification, and C, heterosexual or homosexual lifestyle. Sexual orientation involves the person to whom one is attracted and how one identifies himself or herself in relation to this attraction, which includes both romantic and sexual feelings. Gender identity refers to one's personal experience of gender or social relations. It determines how one sees himself or herself in relation to gender and sexuality. A person could identify himself or herself as masculine or feminine. Gender expression determines how one expresses his or her sexuality through the actions or manner of presenting oneself. LGBTQIA. The abbreviation LGBTQIA is short for lesbian, gay, transgender, queer, questioning, intersex, asexual. This category describes distinct groups outside the heteronormativity who are usually defined by their soji. Heteronormativity is defined as the notion that being heterosexual or the attraction to the opposite sex is the standard for correctness. Heterosexual or straight refers to people who have sexual and romantic feelings mostly for the opposite sex or gender. Men who are attracted to women and women who are attracted to men. Homosexual describes people who have sexual and romantic feelings for the same gender, men, or attracted to men. Men who are attracted to men and women who are attracted to women. Cisgender is someone whose gender identity corresponds with his or her biological sex. A person can be a homosexual and at the same time a cisgender. Identify with the gender they were assigned to at birth cause of their sex. In addition, lesbian pertains to women who are attracted to other women. Gay refers to men who are attracted gay refers to men who are attracted to other men. It can also be used as an umbrella term for homosexuality. Bisexual or bi denotes people who are attracted to both genders. Finally, transgender is an umbrella term that refers to someone whose assigned sex at birth does not represent his or her gender identity. The labels were created to recognize the identity of those who are considered outside the norm of society. These words and terms were popularized to show those who fell outside the norm that they are not alone and that there are others facing the same struggles. While these are the usual words used when discussing LGBT issues, they are in no way stable, fixed, or exclusive. They are temporary as the terminologies for sex and sexuality can change depending on the direction of the LGBT movement. These scenarios are brought to light because of, because of how trans issues are slowly coming to the public awareness. But the same issues have been faced by women throughout history. Although this book does not tackle LGBT issues in depth, it hopes to open readers to these issues as future topics of interest, especially as these are relevant issues in society. Gender advocates want to expand gender issues to include the LGBT, as there is much discrimination against the LGBT in the Philippines. Sample case, a young woman fresh out of college and ready for work had trouble securing a job. 
Her friends could not figure out why. She graduated with Latin honors and topped the board exam in her respective field. She had applied to numerous jobs which granted her interviews. However, after her face-to-face -face interview with numerous potential employers, she was never contacted. When asked why, the company HR merely stated that they do not allow cost-dressing for their employees. That young woman is a trans woman who, while expressing herself as feminine, was recognized by professional institutions as a male. The issue of discrimination based on gender is very prevalent for the LGBT. The woman in the scenario was a transgender, whose biological gender male did not reflect who she is, female. Many posts about trans rights and trans issues circulate in social media. These problems are everyday issues that show how people who only wish to express themselves are prevented from doing so and are black from academic and economic opportunities. Why equate gender issues with women's issues? By definition, gender issues are equated with women's issues because of sexism and gender stereotypes. Sexism is defined as prejudice, as the prejudice against a certain sex. Because we live in a patriarchal society, men are still seen as dominant, leaders, and the norm. This notion places women and the LGBT at risk for discrimination. This book then becomes a pledge for gender equality. Gender equality is defined as the recognition of the state that all human beings are free to enjoy equal conditions and fulfill their human potential to contribute to the state and society. It can also be defined as equality of the sexes, visibility in public and private spheres, and full participation in society. Gender equality is the opposite of gender inequality, not of gender difference, and aims to promote the fullness participation of women and men in society. While some may say women have equal opportunities because they are allowed to have education, livelihood, and political participation, women still have less access to resources, opportunities, and decision-making. These asymmetries and inequalities limit their ability to develop and exercise their full capabilities for their own benefit and for the benefit of the society as a whole. This discussion is not to state that men do not face discrimination. However, men in a male-dominated society have various advantages over women and the LGBT in all spheres economic, political, social, etc. Discriminatory gender roles can be institutionalized through laws and policies. A historical view of the women's movement will help one situate women's and gender issues as we know it. The next chapter will provide more context on women's movement gender develop gender and development and women's and gender issues in the philippines and around the world